In this video, I'm looking at Graphene OS, a minimalist mobile operating system that focuses on security and privacy. Now to answer my very first question about all mobile operating systems is, does it have push notifications? As you can see in the video, yes, push notifications are working on Graphene OS. It accomplishes this by using a sandbox version of Google Play services. This is installable right from the Graphene apps as seen right here. With just one click installation, you can install a sandbox version of Google Play services and you don't even need to log in with a Google account for this to work. Sandbox Google Play Services uses a compatibility layer, but keeps Google Play Services sandboxed, which means that it does not have wide access to the rest of the system, and it works like other apps where you have to give it permission to access certain parts of the phone. The name Graphene comes from a real-life nanostructure, which is made up of a single layer of carbon atoms arranged in a hexagonal lattice that makes a very strong structure. So let's look at Graphene OS. As I mentioned, it's security and privacy focused. By default, it does not have Google Play or any Google services installed. This sounds great, it's easy to install. You can do it from the web browser or the command line. So why are more of us not using Graphene OS? Well, if we look at the list of supported devices, we can see that it is currently only supporting Pixel devices and newer Pixel devices at that. That's because the spirit of this OS focuses on security and privacy and in order to provide the highest level of security, these devices need a focused level of development and the original manufacturer still has to support them to give the latest updates. Now, assuming you have one of these supported devices, you can install Graphene OS and take advantage of the many security and privacy features. One of the main features, as we can see here, is a locked bootloader. This is similar to Calyx OS, but it differs from Lineage OS, which requires an unlocked bootloader. Locking the bootloader significantly improves the security of a device. So if you lose your device, nobody has the ability to install a different OS over top of it or wipe it using our standard methods. Here's the first boot of Graphene OS. As you can see, the logo is very minimal and the color scheme goes along with that. By removing a lot of the Google apps and extra fluff that a standard Android OS includes, you save some battery life and you make it much more clean to use. Graphene OS is based on the Android open source project, so when you look at it, it looks mostly the same as you set it up. However, there are many security features built in, and the OS will notify you of these features as you use it. As with Lineage and Calyx OS, you can use a backup from Seed Vault during the installation. So again, the default color scheme here is rather bland, and it shows that the OS focus is not on these frilly things, but it centers around security. So Graphene comes with its own set of installed apps, including the option to 
install Google Play services in a sandboxed environment. You can update these system apps simply with one press here. It also comes with an auditor app which allows you to use another device to audit your device to see if any tampering has been done with the installation or otherwise. There's a dedicated security section in the settings which allow you a little bit of control. There's also a privacy area. As you can see, by default, the photos won't contain certain information about timestamping. So let's install Google Play services. With just one press of installation, it's much easier to install than, say, a G Apps package. So again, this is a little different from Calyx OS or Lineage for MicroG, which uses the MicroG project to handle these push services and other necessary parts of the Google Play services for certain apps. But according to the description, a sandboxed version of Google Play services may not only be more compatible with apps, but it offers much more privacy as it is not baked right into the system. So it will automatically install the dependencies required for this Google Play service to run on Graphene OS. As I mentioned in the intro, you don't even actually have to sign into Google Play for you to take advantage of the services that it can offer. So you can install your apps via Aurora Store or however you feel most comfortable. But you can also sign into the Google Play Store with any Google account and install apps that way. Again, this is a completely optional step as some more modern applications have different ways of delivering their notifications that might not require Google Play services. However, if you do require certain apps, this does give you the ability to use those apps that rely on the services for notifications or other bits of the Google Play services. So once installed, you'll see in the notifications that Google Play is running. And you do have to allow it to run in the background so that you can get push notifications in a timely manner. So this is one of the permissions that you can give to Google Play services that normally you don't have control over when it's installed by default in a regular Android OS. You can update Google Play Store without signing in and that's available. You can just open it up and there's the option right there in the top right corner. So again here we see that push notifications are working by using this sandbox version of Google Play services and it works as you might expect with your Android operating system. So you might have noticed in this video I'm actually using a Google Pixel 3a which is running Android 12. This is not the latest version, and in fact, this device is no longer supported by Graphene OS. However, I found an old ROM online just to have a look at it. This is not recommended as the security cannot be guaranteed. However, you are free to do whatever you want with your device. In the future, I'd like to get a fully supported device to take advantage of this great operating system. 
Another great feature of this OS is that it allows multiple users in a very easy way to use it. So you might want to install Google Play services on one profile while keeping it completely out of your other profile. This allows a little more control of where the Play services are active. Or if you just want a work profile, a personal profile, it has that ability. Here I've set up a new user and it's setting up a whole new profile for the operating system. This time I'll try the fingerprint reader. According to the feature sheet, there are a few additional security bits that they've included with the fingerprint reader, mostly related to timeout and how many times you can fail with the fingerprint reader, but it works as expected. So here I'm switching users and you can see how easy it is. Graphene OS is a great option if you have a supported device and you are looking for ultimate security and privacy with your mobile. If you don't have a supported device, that's where operating systems like Lineage allow you to at least have a bit more control of your technology. I'm looking forward to getting one of the newer Pixel devices to try this out as my daily driver. If you have any other questions, feel free to comment below. Thanks again for watching, and if you were helped by this video, please subscribe.